Hey, Zach here from digitalconstructive.com, and in this video, we're taking a quick look at the Alabama HVAC license. So who needs an HVAC license in Alabama? Basically, any and all legal entities engaged in the business of heating and air conditioning contracting and installation or service and repair, and that's straight from the Alabama Board of Heating, Air Conditioning, and Refrigeration. Now, they define an HVAC system as a heating and or cooling apparatus consisting of an air heating and or cooling fixture from pipes, planums, or blowers, including any accessory and equipment installed in connection herewith, specifically excluding window units, automotive, or farm implement type heating and or air conditioning equipment. So essentially, if you're looking at taking on projects that involve repair, replacement, or construction of any kind of HVAC system, you're going to need to be licensed with the board. So what are the different types of classifications that are available? There are four main license classifications. You have the HVAC apprentice, you have the certified heating and air conditioning contractor, also known as the HVAC contractor, but then you also have the certified refrigeration contractor and the duct air tightness testing contractor. Now in this video, we're just going to be focusing on the first two classifications. So what are the requirements? You'll need to be at least 18 years of age. You'll need a valid driver's license or USA identification, and you'll need a social security number. Now, it's important to remember that ultimately applications are reviewed on a case by case basis. So it's going to be ultimately up to the board to decide who gets licensed and who doesn't. So let's start with HVAC apprentice requirements. First of all, there's no written exam. You will need to register as an apprentice and you can find that information in the description of this video. And you'll need to work under an HVAC contractor for at least two years. Now, the scope of work is really going to consist of learning and assisting in the installation of HVAC systems. And ultimately, you're going to be working under the direct supervision of a certified contractor. Now, the HVAC contractor requirements are that you work under an HVAC contractor for at least two years, totaling in 3,000 hours, and that you pass the HVAC examination. Upon passing, then at that point, you can take on installation, repair, or replacement projects um, involving HVAC systems without any limits in the state of Alabama. So how long does it take to get licensed in Alabama? Now, the time frame fluctuates, obviously, but ultimately you're going to determine your classification first. You'll submit your application to the board, and then you'll get accepted for your exam and hopefully pass your exam. Now, it's important to remember that this is what happens if there are no issues with your application. If they find anything involving your criminal record or potentially question marks about your experience, at that point, your application will be forwarded for review during one of their quarterly board meetings. They only happen four times a year. So if you're one of the people that get reviewed, your application is going to be reviewed during one of those quarterly board meetings. So let's talk about the application uh, examination. It's going to be an 80-question exam. Um, you'll get 240 minutes to take the test. It's going to be open book, taken on a computer, and you need to at least score 66% to pass. Now, it's also important to remember that you'll be required to complete four hours of continuing education per year. Now, this exam is going to include questions covering law and business, so you need to be prepared to answer questions covering business organization, risk management, project management, estimating, safety and environmental, payroll and employment taxes, financial management, contracts, lien laws, and licensing laws. Now, when it comes to the trade portion of the test, you need to understand insulation and piping, hangers and supports, sound vibration and seismic control, heating and cooling principles, refrigerants, testing, adjusting, and balancing, controls, air conditioning and heat pump systems, furnaces and heaters, chimneys, flues, and vents, combustion air ducts, ventilation and exhaust, and then of course safety. Now we've got complete courses that break down everything that you need to know for both the law and business questions as well as the Alabama HVAC trade portion. And you can check that out either in the top right hand corner or you can check out our courses in the description of this video. Now let's talk about the fees and bonding. So obviously you're going to pay an examination fee, you'll pay license renewal fee, which will be paid annually, and then you're going to need to provide a performance bond. Now it's extremely important to remember that fees are constantly changing everywhere. So for the most up-to-date fees, you're going to want to check out the description of this video where we're continually updating all of the fee-related information. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them uh, below this video. Uh, thanks again for watching. My name is Zach from digitalconstructive.com.